Recently, John Travolta was here talking about his new film, Civil Action. Tonight, we are joined by two of his colleagues, the man who wrote the original book and the screenwriter-director. Jonathan Hart spent eight years working on his first book, A Civil Action, before finally getting it published in 1995. He went on to dominate bestseller list for months and win the National Book Critics Circle Award. Now it had been made into a film by screenwriter and director Steve Zalian. It opens nationwide this Friday. It is already earning critical praise. Joining me now for a conversation about this film, writer-director Steven Zalian, the author of the book Jonathan Haar, and the film star John Travolta, who plays attorney Jan. To do with the character that... Right. Uh, in the, the things movie. I needed were more that I could gather from my memory of working with lawyers for 23 years. I, I got much more of my so-called uh, attributes from those guys. This yeah. story is about two things. One, I mean, many things, but these two, that there are people uh, in this town in Massachusetts who have seen their children die from leukemia and therefore desperately want some questions answered. Uh, that's part of it. The other part is the story of how this lawyer and this law firm come to do battle on their behalf to lose or uh, win as this story evolves. Take a look at this initial meeting between the attorney, played by John, the family, played by different actors, including uh, the actress Kathleen Quinlan, who plays Anne Anderson. Roll tape. Who is going to apologize to you and pay me? There has to be a defendant and one with very deep pockets. This is not an inexpensive case to try. One directoral question. Of course I can. <laughs> the wide shot that you had there, what was that about? Was that, in a sense, for any particular reason, in From the Kitchen? That shot... Um... Uh, was the widest place in the room. That was as far back as we could get. And what I, that's one reason. The other uh, uh, reason was, I don't know if you can tell, or I don't even know if you notice it, but on the counter in the kitchen is all of the food that they've brought and that they hope to eat in celebration for oh, once he takes the case. That. And so it's yeah. all these full, you know, sort of homemade uh pies and chips, you know, plate of chips and that sort of thing. Um, and that's why we're in the kitchen. You said to me uh, that, that they, my guys in the control room picked out just the right scene to oh, so. to ignite the point, to, to, to yeah. illustrate the point we were just mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. This is uh, my favorite scene as far as, um, let's say, uh, his essence and uh, his attributes are, are expressed. I think it's... Uh, I think this is where you see the, the coldness and the distance, the insensitivity, and the um, the indifference that he has, for, for, and, and and his greediness. I mean, it's out out there. We have to find deep pockets, and you don't have it. I mean, it's so. I mean, this is where he shines as a black male lawyer to me. Do you know? What I mean, it, it's. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of my favorite. Right. Uh, Take that and go to this scene. I want. This is the last scene we're going to show you. This is an interesting point because it, again, weaves the themes that we've been talking about in the hour conversation I did earlier with John and in this conversation, uh, where they're debating among the lawyers about whether the case is even about money anymore. Here it is. Listen to yourself. Well, I for one am sick of listening to you. Lost enough because of you. You wouldn't have anything to lose if it wasn't for me. Everything you have, I got for you. My last question, um, Jonathan. What do you hope that law students, film goers, book readers get out of this? That's, um, that's a difficult question. My first aim in writing the book was, I had a couple of different aims, but the first aim is to entertain people. You want to get them into the book, you want them to read it, and then you hope to inform them. But I was not the author pontificating about what it all meant throughout it. I mean, my idea was that um, the author never stepped forward in the book. And my idea was that um, people would come away from it with what they came away from it with. Um, the book is being used in a lot of law schools now, something that flatters me hugely. Um, it's being used to teach civil procedure. I'm not a lawyer, um, never took a civil procedure class. I'm very flattered by that. I had no expectation that that would ever happen. Um, you know, I hope that... Um, there is something else, of course, and I think Steve shares this and John, too, that, uh, that people also come away with uh, 
with a realization of how important it is that we treat our environment well, that you cannot uh, create a sink where you live, that you know, clean air and clean water is vital for us to exist as a society. And I hope that the movie conveys that message as well. And finally, it's also about entertainment, telling a sure. good story. Telling a good story is first and foremost. Thank you, Steve. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you very much. much. Yeah. My friend, as always, <laughs> great to see you. Good to see you. And we'll be right back. Stay with us.